Gee, uh, cup of tea, eh? Thanks, pal. Welcome to India, sir. Captain Gunther, Area Public Relations Officer. Captain? General Kempton asked me to meet you. Did you have a good trip? Well, I was having a good trip until I got hijacked on that crate in Colombo. <laughs> I think you'll find it a little quieter here than in Normandy, sir. Sir? Uh, Let me take care of the formalities here, Colonel. General Kempton would like to see you at headquarters as soon as possible. This is Corporal Baxter. He'll be your driver. Corporal? Is service always this good? We aim to please, Colonel. We aim to please. Yep.
much for that, then, Mush. For the last time, Limey, if you want a genuine antique, buy a genuine antique of your own. Now, don't come that with me, Yank. I bought the swining thing, and I'm going to pay for it. You've got a lot to learn, Limey. What do you mean? I've already acquainted General Cunningham with the reasons for this four-week delay. I'm aware of that, sir. So you can give the General my personal promise that the affair will be cleared up this week. The court martial will take place on Monday. Undoubtedly, Winston will hang. Yes, sir. Two hours ago now. Get moving. Get Corporal McCarthy over here right away. Yes, sir. Barney! Barney, my boy! My gosh, where is that skinny second lieutenant I left at Fort Bragg? What is this? That's what eight months in the hospital bed does to you, General. How is the leg? Hey, Johnny, I'll need that transport breakdown. Come on. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, will it keep at you? No, sir. See me after I finish with Colonel Adams, okay? Sit down, Barney. Sit down. What do you hear from your father? He still sweats vinegar, sir. I'll bet he does. General Adams, I can't imagine that man in retirement. Yes. You've got me wrong, Colonel. I didn't propose replacements. I ordered replacements. Well, Barney, I'd hope to see you a full bird colonel by now. So would I, sir. Maybe if I had jumped instead of ducked. Sit down, Barney, sit down. I've got an assignment here for you, Barney, that's right down your rally. We're going to put some of that legal training of yours to good use. Legal training? I haven't cracked a law book since the Judge Advocates Department. That's 14, that's 15 years. Ah, don't give me that. You did pretty well in law at the point, and you know it. We're holding an important court martial here next week. I need your help. Well. Are those urgent, Johnny? Yes, sir. Uh, let me give you the facts anyway. There's a hill station called Back Cree about 50 miles from here. Four weeks ago, Staff Sergeant Alfred Quinn of the British Army was murdered by Second Lieutenant Charles Winston of the Army of the United States. I'll keep this one for the conference, Johnny. Quinn was unarmed. Winston shot him at close range. There were 11 eyewitnesses. He's confessed. Thank you, Johnny. And those are the facts. Well, I'm ready for any assignment you have for me, General. Let me tell you why the case is important, Barney. We have dual responsibility with the British in this theater. It's no secret that all is not joy and brotherhood between us and our British cousins. So I've noticed. 11 eyewitnesses, Barney. We couldn't play it down. The effect on morale was devastating. I've canceled all leaves. I've clamped down a curfew. But damn it, you can't put a whole army under lock and key. It's getting so a man can't cross town without getting into an alley fight. Barney, this theater is the springboard for the last all-out offensive. I can't tell you because I don't know myself when that offensive begins. But when it does, my God, I want to see us fighting the enemy and not each other. So for the sake of this theater, the Alliance and the war. Lieutenant Winston will be tried, found guilty, and hanged. I'm with you, General. I'll be glad to handle the prosecution. I don't want you for the prosecution, Barney. I want you for the defense. But if he's guilty anyway. Chiefs of Staff Conference in five minutes, sir. I'm on my way, Johnny. He's guilty as hell, Barney, and obviously the Army wants a conviction, but it's got to be a conviction without loopholes. 
I've got to have a satisfactory, intelligent, and responsible defense. I shouldn't think that would be too difficult, sir. Isn't there somebody in the judge advocate's office? No, no, no. I don't want any of those two-bit, time-serving civilian lawyers. I'm an army man. I want an army man behind me. This is an important court-martial. I want a good prosecution. I want a good defense. I want you, Barney. With me? When do I start, sir? You started. You've got an appointment with a judge advocate at 2 o'clock. As for me, I've got an appointment right now. It's good to see you, Barney. When you write to your father, give him my best. Sorry. Not now, Major. I've got five minutes to go. Colonel Adams, I'm honored to make your acquaintance. Colonel Thompson. Sit down. May I say that you come highly recommended? I've seen your record. I was tempted to demand you as a permanent member of my staff. You might feel differently after the trial, Colonel. We've got some good men here. The trial officer, Major Fred Smith. Fine fella. Eleven years with Williston Good and Honeyset. You know the firm? No, but I saw the movie. Colonel, look, I never practiced civilian law. Military law either, to any extent. You have your ribbons. There's a war on. Williston Good and Honeyset don't amount to a row of beans. A Purple Heart and a Silver Star do. That's impressive. I tell you, I could have used you as the trial officer. Well, it's my understanding that it makes no difference who's prosecuting and who's defending. In terms of a conviction, you're right. There's too much talk that Winston will hang because our British cousins want it. Sure they want it. They've got every right. Sure it's important. The unity of the theater is important. But more important is the fact that this man is a murderer and he will die because murder cannot be tolerated. Right? Well, I am the defense counsel. Indeed you are, sir. And I'm looking to you to acquire a thorough knowledge of the case. Your client is waiting for you. Go and see him. Remember that I'm always at your disposal. Feel free to use the department in any way that you wish. We're here to serve. Remember, Barney, we've been with this for weeks. And now there's nothing we want more than to finish with it and wipe the slate clean so that the whole world can look at this case and say, there, by God, is due process of the law. Do you play golf? The British have a very good club here. Counsel. On your feet, Winston. Look, I'm here to help you. Well, Silver Star, Purple Heart, big deal. You won't get any medals for defending me, Colonel. Medals or not, you've agreed to me as your defense counsel. I would have agreed to a gorilla being my defense counsel, Colonel. Look, Winston, I've got four days in which to prepare your case. I've got a lot of people to see and a lot of papers to read. So when I walk in here, you cut out the wisecracks, and when I ask a question, you answer it, right? Do you really want to help me, Colonel? That's what I'm here for. Every morning when they bring in my breakfast, I ask for rye bread. Every morning they bring in whole wheat. Could you do something about that, Colonel? You're a great comedian, Winston. Unfortunately, I have no sense of humor.
Glad to see you here, Colonel. Your quarters comfortable? Great, thanks. The room quiet enough to work in? If it isn't, I can always organize you an office. Oh, no, I'll make out. Thanks. Kate Devray. Half French, half Chinese, unattached. Anything else I can tell you? Barney Adams? Yes? Fred Smith. I'm in the opposite corner. Excuse me, Colonel. How's that? We meet on Monday. I'm handling the prosecution. Oh. I hear you're going to give it the good old college try. I hope so. You, uh, you met your client yet? Wow, who let him in the army? Uh, Navy. <laughs> Very good. Well, we'll meet in the trenches, huh? Oh, forgive me. Have you ever thought of looking where you're going? <laughs> I don't think we've been introduced. We'll just skip the formalities. The pleasure's entirely mine. Meanwhile, we'll make sure that our esteemed ally has left his revolver at home. <laughs> Why don't you just go to bed? I apologize, Colonel. I'll take care of him. Come on, bloody fool. I think it'll stay. No, it'll be quite all right. Don't worry. Will you excuse me? Certainly. She's from Marseille, so you just might be able to interest her in the news from Europe. I'll think of some. We can get a real drink at the bar. Captain, that's the happiest suggestion I've heard since I landed in Europe. <laughs> Lieutenant Oscar Morse, your assistant, sir. We're very pleased to be assigned to this case. I'll take the liberty of ordering your breakfast, sir. Hope we're not too early. We understood you want to make an early start. And a good morning to you. We're both familiar with court martial procedure, and of course, we were both lawyers back in New York. I was with General Mercantile, Oscar with Pete Spence in Richmond. Any relation to Willis and Good and Honeystead? <laughs> well, we're ready to start right in. You name the hours, we'll work them. Remember the Army versus Corporal Frederick? We worked 48 hours, twice round the clock on that one. Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary, gentlemen. We thought we'd discuss a possibility of asking for a delay. It's been made pretty plain to me that the Army doesn't want any further delay. We've got three days. You men must know there's a hell of a lot of unrest about this case. But that's unreasonable. It's not unreasonable, it's military necessity. We have a list of the officers assigned to the court here, sir. We thought it might be a good idea if we went over them. Mm-hmm. Court of ten officers, president not yet appointed, law officer Colonel Maybert. Yeah, Colonel Maybert says it's law, it is law, and you can depend on it. Colonel Kelly, regular, sound man. Colonel Hardy. Judge Hardy. What did he say? Judge Hardy type, sir. It's true, he is a judge in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Can we say, in effect, this conversation is privileged, sir? Hmm? Can we talk frankly? Oh, sure, go ahead. Colonel Burnside, Southern gentleman, fine manners, amenable, but uh, not over-intelligent. Do you agree, Oscar? Bird brain. Bird brain is right, sir. He'll agree with you, he'll agree with the prosecution, but in the long run, he'll agree with the man in charge. I don't think we need go any further, gentlemen. We'll, uh, we'll go over this just before the trial. We're just trying to say who's for us and who again. What about your challenges? We have a replacement list of 17 officers. Want to go over them? I don't propose to use any challenges. I'm afraid I don't follow you, Colonel. I'm not going to challenge any member of the court. In order to challenge an officer, I've got to show cause, right? I know, sir. You men are civilian lawyers. You've got a living to go back to. I make my living right here in the Army, gentlemen. Can't you just see me challenging a senior officer on the grounds that he's a bird brain? Have you men talked to Winston? No, sir. He's a difficult man to deal with. Examined by a lunacy commission, found sane, fit to stand trial. I think I'll just mosey on over to the hospital. 
Talk to some of those doctors, see if I can't get a lead on the best way of getting through to them. You must appreciate, Colonel, that I've got 1,200 cases here. Not only disease, cholera, malaria, dysentery, I'm the base general hospital for the Burma War, wounds, infections, battle fatigue. There's a constant airlift, hundreds of new cases every day. I do appreciate that, Colonel, but I'm just trying to get a general picture of the man. Something that might help me get through to him. We weren't concerned with getting through to him. Our job was simply to establish that he could distinguish right from wrong. Thank you, sir. Well, anything you remember, Colonel. After all, you did have the Lunacy Commission. Oh, he was uncouth. He was an officer like uncooperative. You must realize, Colonel, that lunacy boards are... Well, perhaps normal is the wrong word, but let me say they're not unusual in this theater. We men cracking up every day one way and another. You asked for an impression. You know, my only clear impression is that there was no reason to send Winston to this hospital in the first place. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I suppose somebody was just playing it safe. I don't want to waste your time. Can you remember who recommended Lieutenant Winston to the lunacy board? Well, again, it's difficult. My uh, psychiatrists are shipping people over to me every day. I'm afraid they're inclined to make a schizophrenic out of every case of battle fatigue. Yes, miss. From Dr. Kaufman. Hello. Thank you, nurse. I could check through my records, I suppose. Oh, that probably won't be necessary, Colonel. I'm going to see Winston again today. We'll just see how it turns out. I don't envy you your job defending that man. It's an assignment, sir. I apologize for being so busy. Is there anything else I can tell you? Thank you, sir. I shouldn't think so. Sorry to have intruded. I'm afraid I haven't been much help. If there's anything further I can do, please call me. I'm sure we can find some time together. Thank you, sir. Colonel Adams. I know your name, too. Kate Davray. They didn't tell me you were a nurse or had a reported sick. You are defending Winston. Yeah. Colonel Burton knows very well who examined Winston. It was Dr. Kaufman, the head of psychiatry. I was there. I worked for him. Well, then, getting down to cases. Will he let you have the evening off? Major Kaufman found Winston insane. Don't take any notice of Colonel Burton. He hasn't got anything like Dr. Kaufman's qualifications. He's the commanding officer, honey. That gives him qualifications. I don't like it when men like Leon Kaufman get shoved around. What you're telling me, lady, is that a major had a run-in with a colonel and the colonel won. Colonels usually do, you know. Now, how about dinner? No, thank you. I'm busy. Take it easy, soldier. The first ten miles of the roughest. Go right outside, Colonel. Thank you, Sergeant. Oh, come in, uh, Colonel Adams. Please sit down. I'm. Uh... Sorry, I blew my stack yesterday. Uh, a place like this makes you like that. Forget it. Like I said, I'm just here to help you. You can't help me, Colonel. I can defend you in court. No matter what you did, you're entitled to a fair trial. I killed a man, Colonel. They said there's no defense for that. Why did you do it? You wouldn't believe me. Try me. Colonel, do you know what this war is all about? I've got a couple of theories, yeah. They'd be wrong, believe me. The war is nothing. It's what's going to happen after that counts. It's going to start right here in Asia. East against West, black against white. Well, suppose we put the political discussions aside for the moment and get down to cases, huh? All right, then Sergeant Quinn was not on our side. He was on the other. He was a bad influence. He was spreading sedition. He was altogether an evil man. He'd sit and spout democracy, then he'd go out. Where'd he go? Up into the hills, to one of those native villages. He had women up there, black women. I saw him. And then he'd come back and 
Tell us about this brave new world that he and his black brothers were going to make after the war was over. Well, I mean, Colonel, I didn't think so much of that. Winston, it's my experience that a man rarely kills for an ideal. Didn't you have some uh, personal reason for killing Quinn? You haven't listened to one word I've said, have you? I'm just trying to understand you. You know, men like you make me sick. You're so busy at acting the hero and winning your war and scrambling up your little lattice for promotion, you can't see further than the next rung. You make me want to throw up. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me, Lieutenant? Winston. Sergeant. You can send for me anytime you need me. Take me to the hospital. Again? Yes, again. Nurse, can you tell me where I can find Dr. Kaufman's office, please? Uh, last hut on the left, Colonel. Thank you. Kaufman? Colonel. My name's Barney Adams. You mind if I ask you a few questions? Let me say at once, Colonel Adams, that Nurse Stavray had no authority to introduce my name to you. No authority whatever. I don't need any authorities, Major. I have my own. Very well, then. In what way can I help you? You examined Winston, right? Mm hmm. Why was he brought here in the first place? It was a formality. He killed a man in cold blood and apparently without reason. Obviously, he had to be examined. What were your conclusions? That is confidential. Major, I am the defense counsel in a murder trial. Admittedly, you don't have to talk now, but I can order you to appear before me and tell me everything I want to know. So why don't we discuss this like sensible people? There's nothing to discuss. I wrote a report on Winston's condition, which my CO found unacceptable. I know you wrote a report, Major. I want to know what was in that report. Colonel, for a senior officer, you seem to know very little about Army protocol. I wrote a report on Winston, which was rejected. I was ordered to discharge him from the hospital, and I refused. From that point on, he was no longer my responsibility. He is not my responsibility now, Colonel. You must see my commanding officer. I'll see your commanding officer in due time. Right now, I want that report. I am unable to give it to you. Oh, Major, have I got news for you. You're able to give me anything I want. Very well, then. I've been ordered not to give it to you. Are you telling me that Colonel Burton has forbidden you to give me that report? Let's say he advised me not to. Let's say that I'm demanding it, Kaufman. There is no document in this theater which I cannot obtain. Why? What good would it do? You can't save Winston. I can't save him. You know he's got to hang, so why don't you just leave me alone to go away? Major, I am ordering you to give me that report. Colonel Adams, would you excuse us, nurse? Colonel Adams, if you wish to interview members of my staff, I'd take it as a courtesy if you'd see me first. This happens to be my office, Colonel. It happens to be my hospital, Major. If you wish to interview Major Kaufman, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to do it on his own time. Colonel Burton, I am the defending officer in the trial for a man's life. 
I don't know what your powers are in this theater, but believe me, mine are greater. There is no one, repeat, no one whose presence is forbidden to me from General Kenton himself on downward. That goes for Major Kaufman, and bank on this, it goes for you too. Major, you will report to the senior officer's mess at 6 o'clock tonight and bring that report on Lieutenant Winston with you. Colonel Adams, is a dinner date still open? Sure. Ever try Chinese food? I'll set them for Indian. Do you know the Akbar restaurant? I'll check with the American Express. About 9 o'clock? Okay. Now we're pushing ahead faster. It's my guess that the war in Europe will be over by the end. Would you agree with that, Major? Good evening, sir. Good evening. I got the list of prosecution witnesses. I don't think any of them will be much use to us. Okay, we'll go over those later. Do you need us any more tonight, sir? Yeah, I might. I'm meeting with Major Kaufman in a few minutes. Major Kaufman, sir? You're going to get a statement from him? If he's got anything to say, I am. The fellas better stick around. Yes, sir. That'll start the ball rolling. Oh, I hear the brother-in-law is approved of you as defense counsel. What brother-in-law? The congressman, Winston's brother-in-law. The congressman kept ejecting to the defense counsel. That's why the case was delayed. And you know, sir, I guess he reckons you fill the bill. At ease. In conference, gentlemen. That's what I like to see, working by day and night. I've been talking to Smith. He tells me you're going to give him a run for his money. I hope so. You'll need to. You've got one hell of a stickler as trial judge. Uh, who is the trial judge, sir? I am, my boy. See you at dinner, Barney. Excuse me, sir. There is an officer waiting to see you. You men wait here. Off one, huh? We're moving, Harvey. Good evening, Colonel. Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. I'm just looking for Major Cuff. Well, I don't think you'll find him here, sir. There was an urgent requirement for a doctor at the malaria hospital up in secret. He sends his apologies. What the hell do you mean he sends his apologies, Captain? I ordered him here. Well, it was a pretty urgent transfer, sir. They sent him up this afternoon. What's he going to do, psychoanalyze mosquitoes? Well, I understand there's a shortage of staff up there. Who shipped them up there, Burton? Colonel Burton, the vet for the... Colonel, uh, the order came direct from General Kempton himself. Oh, it did, huh? Colonel Adams is here, sir. Colonel Adams, show him in, man. Show him in. You there, Barney? General, do you want me to defend Winston or just get up in court and tell jokes? I'll be with you in a minute. You've already handed me a rifle loaded with blanks. Do you have to take away the bolt, too? I'm not with you, Barney. I don't wish to be impertinent, General, but you'll just pluck my only witness right out from under my nose. Uh, that's tough luck. Hey, hand me that talent, would you? General, damn it, I've got two days in which to prepare a case. <laughs> Barney. Barney, if you had a year, you're still defending a confessed murderer. It's a formality. You know it's a formality. And with that rope. General, why was Kaufman transferred? No, oh, no, Barney. You don't think that every time I transfer an officer, I can take time out to check if he's going to be needed as a court-martial witness? Don't stall with me, please, General. Why did you transfer Kaufman? The exigencies of war, Barney. All right. Play it that way. But for my part, I want off the case. Would you locate General Cunningham for me, please? He may still be at headquarters. All right.
right, Barney, I'll lay it on the table for you. I have no doubt that by now, you've heard about Winston's brother-in-law. You mean a congressman? Now, that's yeah. another thing. I meant to tell you about him, but I was in a hell of a rush. Barney, this fellow is a one-man Washington. I've got a file of wires from him as thick as your arm. Who's defending Winston? What are his qualifications? Objection, objection. Then the British sniping at me, baying for blood. Wires from the Pentagon. By what authority have I postponed a court-martial? Well, Barney, I'm no hero. I've had the army behind me on this case, but they've taken all the delay and dithering they're going to take. So if you're worried, Barney, you'll have to stay worried. I will not have another postponement. General, have you considered that Winston might be insane? Oh, the hell with that. Obviously, he's not normal. Normal people don't shoot other people dead. So if that's your idea of a defense, forget it. What other defense is there? That's your job, not mine. But we do have the word of a lunacy, Paul, that Winston can recognize right from wrong, and you haven't got a snowball's chance in hell of proving otherwise. So do us both a favor. Find a defense that can't be tossed out in two and a half minutes flat, right? Look, do you think I fixed this trial? No, sir. Do you think I fixed the lunacy board? No, sir. Barney, we're not strangers. You're the son of one of my best friends. We share something. We're army. You must understand that. When I say that anything is worth a price if it brings unity, then you know what I'm talking about. I know, General. But I'm not so sure we bring unity by hanging a sick man. If Winston's death could shorten this war even by moments, it becomes the one positive fact of his life. Hell's bells, Barney. What are you kicking at? I'm not asking you to judge Winston. I'm asking you to handle a crisis. Before this war is over, I'll have a thousand problems like this one. I'm asking you to take just one of them off my back. I still don't like it. I'm not asking you to like it, Colonel. I'm telling you to defend Winston, and I'm telling you to get on with it. And you'll do your job, Colonel. Like it or not, you'll do it, and you'll do it the Army's way, yes? Oh, hello, Peter. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly how I feel about it. Great. Good. Susie! What's that? Oh, yes, I'm sure I can manage it. Colonel Adams? This way, madam. Well, how are you? I'm curious. Join the club. What do you have? Uh, a martini, please. Another large scotch for me. Sir? Do you know what they have done to Leon Kaufman? Well, I know they transferred him. What else have they done? Taken away his stethoscope? Are you going to let them get away with it? I tried to call the White House, but the line was busy. You are just as angry as I am about Dr. Kaufman's transfer. Why well, try to joke about it? So I know how to relax. You're not relaxing. You're just bottling it up. Well, we have deli chicken hot, deli chicken cold, chicken tandoori. Just how much do you want to help, Winston? Just how much do you like chicken? Because it's either that or my dress lamp. Do you know that Dr. Kaufman destroyed his report before he left? Doesn't surprise me a bit. How about wine? You like wine? Here's a copy of it. I took it from the confidential file. Well, then you're an idiot. What are you, some kind of a kleptomaniac? Now you take that thing right back where you found it. Aren't you going to read it? It's a carbon copy. It's unsigned, it's unauthorized, and it's stolen. I'd look pretty funny bringing that up in court, wouldn't I? Why, would it harm your career? Oh, come on, honey. I've got my own conscience. I don't need yours, too. If you want to take on the big, bad army dragon, that's okay by me. But just let me do my job my way, huh? That's been a long, hard day. If you want to eat, let's eat. If you want to argue about principle, about hospital politics, about the true course of justice, that's the way out right there. Chicken deli for one. Hot. Oh, there you are, sir. We got a message from Captain Gunther. He forgot to tell you there's a press conference on Sunday at 12 noon. Incidentally, Colonel, how'd you make out with Kaufman? Lieutenant, 
This is a private room, not an annex to the officer's mess. In the future, when you wish food and drink, you will go out and get it at the proper time. Yes, sir. How do you get to Bacree? Bacree, sir? You heard me the first time. By train. We're going up there tomorrow. You're in charge of arrangements, Lieutenant. Why are we going? How many witnesses do we have in Bacree? Eleven, sir, but they're all prosecution witnesses. They all saw the murder. Frankly, I think we'd be wasting our time. I'm not telling you to think, Lieutenant. Eleven witnesses, that's eleven different stories. I want every statement checked against every other statement. I want every discrepancy examined. And that is the day's work. If you say so, Colonel. We'll just be going through the motions. All right, so we'll go through the motions. Whose side is he on? The Army's. Boy, that's about a third degree in there. Wow. Next time I see those guys, they're going to bring my own lawyers. All right, gentlemen, back to work. Not the King's birthday on the 4th of July, you know. Which hand did he have the gun in? His right hand. No, left hand, I you think. You saw him fire the gun, yet you can't remember what hand he held it in. Well, I don't see it makes much difference. He still shot him. Got a point, though. Now, according to the diagram here, where was your bed located? Right here. Now, if your bed was here, Sergeant Sergeant Johnson! Where the devil do you think you are, Wembley Stadium? Which of you is supposed to be on sick parade? Where's Sergeant Johnson? It's in there, sir, big question. What the hell are you talking about? Are you responsible for all this kerfuffing about out here? That I am, Major. Well, you might have given us a bit of warning. I've got three hell holes like this to visit before nightfall, and there's nothing but 50 miles of damn hole between every one of them. Sorry, sir. I'll put a scrub around it. They're all malingerers in any case. John Kensington, by the way. Barney Adam. And now you're here, you better have a quick one. This way. Don't be alarmed. Jim. I have to go to great lengths to outwit these thieving nits up here. Sorry about you, but Charlie's over there. I don't mind you wasting your own time, but I always take it rather amiss when people waste mine. Water? Oh, I'll take it neat. What makes you think I'm wasting my time? Well, it's a bit of a farce, isn't it? You been out here long? Do you know Winston well? As well as I know anyone here. I'm up at supply headquarters. This is only one of half a dozen stations on my parish. But I spoke to him occasionally. To tell you the truth, I had developed the habit of nipping very smartly around the side of a hut when I saw him coming. Completely off his jump now. What do you mean? Well, he's crackers, you know that. I've never heard of a murderer yet, but someone didn't say he was crazy. Look, Major, I'm not a doctor. I'm not even a lawyer. Just a soldier. The only thing I do know is that Winston is a confessed murderer. Well, you're defending him, Ducky. Why not? You've got to get through the motions, haven't you? Now, wait a minute. Now, oh, come up. I know the score. You can plead anything for Winston except insanity, because if he's insane, he's not guilty. Right? But he's got to be found guilty because he's got to hang. And he's got to hang. If only to save the American command from a good deal of embarrassment. He's got to hang because he's a murderer. He's mad all the same. The man's a paranoid. He's an incurable psychopath. What are your qualifications for saying that? I'm a psychiatrist. Well, then what are you doing in a dump like this? You may well ask. I happen to take the view that a certain liaison officer was too sick to resume his duties. They happened to need a liaison officer at that time of the war more than they needed a psychiatrist. So here I am inspecting nether portions. 
At the suggestion, I may say, of the American command. I take it you don't like Americans. Oh, I can take them or leave them. You seem to have all the clever answers, Major. If you're so sure that Winston is insane, why haven't you come forward and said so? Well, why the hell should I? I was told pointedly enough that it was none of my business when I sent him down to the hospital. I have been specially ordered to keep my nose out of it all, and that I'll do. Good grief, man. If you want to prove him insane, there's someone down there that can do it for you in five minutes. Kaufman. Go and see Kaufman. When did you last see Winston? The night of the murder, as they say. I was called over to see if I could do anything for poor old Quinn. Winston had rather sensibly retired to his hut, and there were about four bots guarding him. Did you talk to him? Yes, I did, and a rather difficult job it was, too. He simply sat there staring in front of him. However, eventually he began to talk. What about? All the usual junk. All about the teeming millions plotting to overthrow the world. Surely he's mentioned it. You talking about Quinn? No, he seemed to have forgotten all about Quinn. I can tell you why he killed him, if that's what's worrying you. Major Kensington. Yes, Corporal. Reporting six, sir. Go inside, will you? You see, there's no British officer here in Bakri. As senior British NCO, Quinn had roughly the same responsibilities as Winston had as an American officer. This always nettled Winston. He held that there was some mysterious plot afoot to keep him from a more responsible job. Perfectly true. The chap is totally incompetent. That's still no reason for killing a man. It is, if you're a psychopath. It's my knee, sir. Keep it clean. I'll look at it Thursday. Lock the door and give the key to the sergeant. Yes, sir. Cheer up, Ducky. The top brass is on your side. Time it is. Another long, hard day? Yep. How did you know where to find me? I've got connections for the FBI. I heard you went up to Bakri. Yeah. I met a uh, Major Kensington up there. I used to know him. He's a brilliant man. You've got some kind of a thing about psychiatrists, haven't you? He's a very honest man, too. If he tells you something, you can believe it. Yeah. I'm sorry. You don't want to talk about it. Can I cook you something? You mean girls still do the cooking? Well, how have I been out of touch? Aren't you married? Nope. Why? Oh, don't take me too literally. I was married once. She just got tired of chasing me around from camp to camp. After a while, she forgot who she was chasing. And since then? What do you mean, since then? Half the world is women. Don't any of them love you? Oh, I suppose some of them do, some don't. Any happiness that way? Happiness is not very high on the list of army priorities, honey. You just take it where you can. Even the place doesn't make any difference because tomorrow you're someplace else. Like Kaufman. You just don't give up, do you? Mm -hmm. No. The trouble with the Winston affair, Kate, is that everybody's in the right. So 
Some people think he's insane and shouldn't be hanged, and some of them couldn't give a hoot in hell whether he's sane or insane. They think that there are bigger things at stake than Winston, that there's a war to be won. He's just there to be sacrificed like any one of us. What do you believe, Barney? I don't know, honey. I just don't know. Look at me, Barney. Look at me. I am part French, part Chinese. Can't you imagine how much I despise the Winstons of this world? But I couldn't be his executioner. Jasmine, it only comes out at night. Yeah, Jasmine and me both. It's very late. Uh-huh. On the other hand, you did offer to do the cooking. All right. On the other hand, I'm not hungry. If you want to put your conscience on my pillow, it's all right by me. Briefing is being called at your request because of the widespread interest in the Winston case in our respective countries. Now, you all know the rules. This is strictly an off-the-record session for background use only. No direct quotes. You can ask a question of anyone you like. If you get a no comment, then the decision holds, right? Now, it's Sunday and the bar's open. We've all got a lot to do, so uh, fire away. Colonel Thompson, was Colonel Adams brought into the theater specifically to handle this case? No, he wasn't. By fortuitous circumstance, a courageous soldier with a brilliant legal background was dropped into our laps at this most difficult time. What chance does Colonel Adams think he has of saving Winston's life? I have no idea. I was assigned to defend Lieutenant Winston, and I shall do that to the best of my ability. Alec, what are the political issues involved here? No comment. This is a military trial, and there are no political issues involved. Oh, come off it, Alec. Do be a bit more flexible. Let's face it. This case is a hot potato because an American officer murdered a British non-com. There are political implications. No comment. And you may quote me. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead. On the subject of political consequences, I think it is right to say that this is a very broad topic. For not only the murderer, but the... Sir, this is not a forum. Now, if you have a question, would you please ask it? I was merely trying to explain, sir, that my readers would ask this question. Is there any justice apart from might? You, well, who's that question directed at? I think possibly the gentleman for the defense. Justice exists only in its own right. It exists apart from power and apart from might. Expedience can have no part in justice. Thank you, sir. Any more questions? No? Good. Court convenes at 0900 hours tomorrow. Press facilities in room 307. Lieutenant Severson will take care of you. By the way, how's your client? I'm just on my way to see him, Colonel. Well, you get a good rest, Barney. See you in court tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. You know, that's a good line. Expedience can have no part in justice. Good quote. Here it is, Colonel, all wrapped up. Full brief and all the depositions. Fine. Now, my advice to you, gentlemen, is to get out of here, go someplace cozy, and get stoned. Is 
Jackson out there? I haven't had my dinner yet. You mean Sergeant Jackson? He'll get you supper. Winston? I have to enter a plea of not guilty at your trial. The only case I have is that you were not responsible for your actions when you shot Quinn. I was responsible. Well, there are some people who hold that you were not. What people? Who have you been talking to? Winston, I'm your counsel. You have to trust me. All right. I'll trust you. Shall I tell you why I shot Sergeant Quinn? Yes. Will you believe me? I'll believe you. I watched him. This was no sudden decision, Colonel. I watched him for months. I followed him. He never knew it. I used to follow him up that hill and watch him with those black witches up there. He was defiling the race, Colonel. He was defiling the white race. He wasn't fit to live in a white man's world. Then he'd come back and he'd start swaggering around and giving orders, countermanding my orders. I was the only officer there. I was responsible. I had to kill him. Will you tell this story in court, Winston? I kept a book. And every little thing that that man did, I wrote down in that book. I had it in the book. June 15th, appeared a parade in civilian shoes. June 14th, back up the hill. June 15th, whistling. And he stole it! He stole my book! Nobody else could have done it! Will you say all this in court? What are you, mister? Some kind of lousy wog lover? I'm your counsel, Winston. You said you trusted me. I don't trust anybody! You're like that Dr. Creepy Cop, and you're always snooling around. You've got to trust me. Let me help you. Big all-American boy, blue-eyed hero. So you were talking to Kaufman, weren't you? What were you doing spending your time there? Crawling around with wad lovers? Come on, Winston, sit down. I won't sit down! Nigger! Nigger! You cut big and jiggaboo! Take your brother out of here. Do that often? He does it. You don't let it bother you? No, our poor fellow's crazy. <laughs> okay, Lieutenant. Exercise. I've got 10 bucks, says he'll be a full bird colonel a week after Winston gets it. You really think so? Sure, it's the old city hall handout. Have you seen anything in Lieutenant Morris or Ben? You know he's no Clarence. I think they went to that race club, sir. He seems to enjoy huh? just Thank standing you. up in his hind legs and saying just what he's been told to say. Because you could be right. I know I'm right. I once knew a case... Would you mind repeating that? I say, look here, wait a minute. Ah, it... oh, nuts, he knows what I'm saying. <laughs> I was only saying that oh, you've got a lousy assignment. As of now, chum, so have you.
come in? After a little more happiness? I think I left a report here this morning. Come in. How far is it to the Secree Hospital? Nearly a hundred miles. Mm. I'm going to have a long drive. You are going to see Major Kaufman? Yes. Are you sure he's going to help you? I think I know my man. Why not, Barney? Why have you suddenly decided to defend Winston? I'm not defending Winston, Kate. I'm defending myself. I suppose you think it's a little late for that. You've been an army man for 18 years. You have been on the Winston case for four days. You haven't been doing too badly. Take that and use it to wrap souvenirs in. I want you to prepare me a new brief for pleading insanity. Yes, sir. Bender, I want you to go to records, break in if necessary. Get every possible word you can find on Colonel Burton and all the other officers on the lunacy board. Colonel Burton won't ever admit insanity, sir. No, but Kaufman will. He's up country. I know that. You want us to contact him? No, oh, thank you. You mentioned Kaufman's name on the telephone. He'll be off to the Philippines by morning. I want him here in court, because without him, we haven't got a case. You bring me the brief, gentlemen, I'll bring you the witness. Can I help you, sir? Where can I find the officer's quarters? Block 34. Straight up, right, and then left. Thank you. You're welcome. See him hang? Hey, for crying out loud, shut up, huh? Look, Buster, unless you can pull rank on me and I'm a lieutenant colonel, you just stick a pillow over your head. Are you prepared to see him hang? Look, I've done all that I could do. When Burton asked me to declare Winston sane, I refused. I didn't have to refuse. I just couldn't sign that paper. And what happened? I'm a senior psychiatrist. Today, I'm handing out charcoal pills in the middle of the jungle. Now you want me to go even further. You tell me why. Because you're a doctor. Because you're the only man who can save him. <sighs> Look. The other day, Winston asked me if I knew what this war was all about. I'm sure he's asked you the same question. Well, right now, this war is all about a man named Winston. It's, uh, it's easy to fight for the innocent, but when you fight for the sick, for the warped, for the lost, then you've got justice. It's a big word. I know it is, you know. Bigger than my career. Bigger than yours. What time do you want me there? 
11 a.m. I've got my round to do at 7. You'll make it, Major. It's all right. I'll be there. Thank you, Doctor. Now, according to the diagram, that's Exhibit B, sir, your bed, Corporal Zimmerman, was opposite and to the left of Staff Sergeant Quinn's cubicle. Yes, sir. And if Sergeant Quinn had made any move at all to defend himself, you would have seen. Yes, sir. And did he try and defend himself? No, sir, he didn't have a chance. Did he reach out for his own gun? No, he couldn't. And you were an eyewitness to this cold-blooded killing? Yes, sir. No further questions. You may cross-examine, Colonel Adams. I have no questions, sir. Colonel Adams, as you have elected not to make an opening statement, it would be improper for me to press you on your line of defense. However, the court has noted that so far, four witnesses have taken the stand without any cross-examination by defense counsel. If it will help the court, sir, the defense is prepared to concede that Lieutenant Winston did shoot Staff Sergeant Quinn in the manner described. As far as I'm concerned, there's no need for any further eyewitnesses. That is for the court to decide, Colonel Adams. What I require is that you satisfy me that Lieutenant Winston will be provided with an active and alert defense. With respect to the court, sir, I claim the right to present my defense in the way that will most benefit the accused. At this moment, all I intend to say is that at the time of the murder, Lieutenant Winston could not distinguish right from wrong. Corporal Zimmerman, you have testified that you knew Lieutenant Winston for four months. Yes, sir. Yes. In that time, did you notice any peculiarities or eccentricities of any kind in his behavior? No, sir. Nothing at all that would have led you to suspect, even for a moment, that Lieutenant Winston was not a perfectly normal, rational officer? No, sir. Are you sure you have no questions before I release this witness, Colonel Adams? Corporal Zimmerman, what did you do in civilian life? I moved around. You know, there was this bowling alley There's where no I used time to... in your career where you were practicing psychiatrist. <laughs> no, no, sir. Thank you. That's all. Now, sir, I'd like to draw your attention to paragraph three here under... Your call, sir. Yes, sir. I'd suggest... Yes. Yes, Johnny. No questions at all. Where the hell's that defense he's supposed to put up? How many more prosecution witnesses? Huh? Call me again. I'm sorry, Major. Go right ahead. Yes, well, I suggest that... Now, you've told the court, Colonel Burton, that when you had heard from headquarters about the murder, you telephoned Major Kaufman and asked him why he had admitted Lieutenant Winston. Yes, I did. He said he was sick, that he was in a profound, confusional, and depressed state. And then you examined Lieutenant Winston yourself? Yes, I did. What were the results of your examination? He was suffering from general fatigue. He also suffers from a nervous stomach and athlete's foot. Apart from that, I'd say his health was normal. But did you find any indication at all that Lieutenant Winston was mentally sick? I did not. Well, having found that Lieutenant Winston was sound of body and mind, what did you do? Having been advised by theater headquarters that this man Kaufman. should stand trial as soon as possible, I suggested to Major Kaufman that he be immediately discharged from hospital and transferred to the stockade. And was he so discharged, Colonel Burton? He was not. Major Kaufman refused to sign his discharge papers. What did you do then? I reported this to headquarters. General Kempton instructed me to convene a lunacy commission and to examine Winston. And what were the findings of that commission? The commission found Lieutenant Winston to be sane, fit, and responsible to stand trial. If the court pleases, the United States Army is prepared to rest on the evidence that has been taken. I feel it has been proven that the murder of Staff Sergeant Quinn of the Royal Army Service Corps on the night of August 16th at the United States Army Corps Depot in Bakree was willfully and with forethought committed by the defendant, Lieutenant Charles Winston, while he was of sound mind and in full possession of all of his faculties. You may present your witnesses, Colonel Adams. Colonel Adams! The court 
was indeed distressed to hear of the death of Major Kaufman. However, our first and only task is to dispense justice in the trial now before us. The court will recess for one half hour. If only we'd subpoenaed Kaufman three days ago, he wouldn't have been transferred. What's the use in saying if only? We didn't and he was. If only we'd cross-examined. Morris, Spender, shut up. Gentlemen, the only court-martial case I ever defended was 16 years ago when I got a not guilty verdict for a master sergeant accused of stealing by finding a 10-ton truck. So I can honestly say I have never lost a case yet. Now we're going to fight this thing through. And the uh, hell with Thompson and all the rest of them out there. Yes, sir. Lieutenant? I want to open up by putting you on the witness stand. Why? I want you to tell the court exactly as you told me why you killed Quinn. I've already confessed to the murder. I have nothing else to say. I want you on that stand. The court will rise. I'm not getting on that stand. I don't have to and you can't make me. Well, I know my rights, Colonel. What do you think I am, some kind of a nut? The court will come to order. That's a joke, Colonel. All parties to the trial who are present with the court recessed are again present at court. Colonel Adams? I'm trying to report. <coughs> Sir, Major Kaufman's evidence is no longer available to us. This is a report written by him in respect of Lieutenant Winston. With your permission, I would like it read into the record. May I see that, please? This is a carbon copy, Colonel Adams. Have you the original? The original has been destroyed. Well, this is neither signed nor certified a true copy. As law officer, I must rule that this document cannot be admitted as an authentic copy of Major Kaufman's report without proof that he was the author of it. Do you intend to produce that proof? I intend to try, sir. Call Colonel Burton. Even if they won't accept the reporter's evidence, you can put it on the record for the information of the court. I could put a comic book on the record if I wanted to. I want that report admitted as the evidence of a qualified psychiatrist. Colonel Burton. Colonel Burton, I will remind you that you are still under oath. Colonel Adams, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Colonel Burton, Ms. Lunacy Commission, who are the members? Colonel Hale, Major Frank, and myself. Colonel Hale is some kind of a surgeon, is he not? He is a surgeon. And Major Frank is a dentist. Yes. And you, sir, before you were commissioned, you were the resident company physician of the uh, Hamilton Truck Works in Detroit. Yes. Are you a psychiatrist, sir? Not in a formal sense. Well, in an informal sense. No, I've read books on the subject. Oh, which books? I repeat, sir, what books? I don't recollect the titles. Uh-huh. And in this uh, general hospital of yours, do you have a department of psychiatry? We have a neuropsychopathic ward. In other words, you do have a psychiatric department. I suppose so. You suppose so. And uh, how many psychiatrists are on the staff of that department? Three, I believe. Three, you believe? And what you are telling the court is that none of them was competent to sit on the Lunacy Commission? That is so. And yet, when one of them, Major Kaufman, submitted a report to you on Lieutenant Winston's condition, you rejected that report? Yes. As I said, the report was neither competent nor scientific. You read it carefully? Yes, I did. And this uh, surgeon and this dentist, they also read the report? I don't know. Well, I submit that you do know, sir. Was the report given to them? Possibly not, as I rejected it. 
And so you, Colonel Burton, are the only man who has read Major Kaufman's report. I believe so. Thank you, sir. If the court pleases, I would like this to be stamped for... Colonel Adams, the law officer has already ruled this document cannot be admitted. I believe that what Colonel Adams wishes to do is to have Colonel Burton authenticate the report. Is that so, Colonel? With the court's permission. Major Smith, do you wish to examine this? Not at present. Very well. I rule that this document be admitted into evidence as an anonymous report of unspecified origin. It's up to the defense to authenticate it as the work of any particular person. Thank you. Colonel Burton, would you read this, please? Seconds. Is that the time you usually allow for reports submitted to you? Now, Colonel, would you tell the court, please, is this a copy of the report submitted to you by Major Leon Kaufman? I don't know. You don't know? Colonel, you have sworn to the court that you read Major Kaufman's report carefully and you rejected it. Must I remind you that you are under oath? Man, please, the court. Colonel Burton is not on trial. I object to this whole line of questioning. Colonel Adams will confine his questions to the examination. I ask you again, is this a copy of the report submitted to you by Major Kaufman? No. Do you recognize any part of it as the work of Major Kaufman? That's impossible to say. He was in the habit of making several drafts of his reports. It might be an earlier draft. Getting back to your days with the uh, Hamilton Truck Company, did you resign or were you discharged? I resigned. Were you not discharged because you diagnosed a heart attack as acute indigestion? Objection. Certainly not. All right. We'll uh, put your civilian career to one side for the moment. I'm going to ask you once more about this report, and I again remind you that you are under oath. I object. Colonel Adams, your constant reminders to Colonel Burton that he is still under oath are offensive. You are not examining a criminal, but an officer and a gentleman who accepts the role of a cooperative witness. Do you have any more questions for this witness? Yes, sir, I do. In that case, we will recess for lunch. The court is recessed till 2.15 this afternoon at which time those persons having business before it will appear here again. What was he ever saved by the bell? Got a minute, sir? Sure. Come in, Barney. Smoke. Thank you. What a luxury to be in a room without a telephone. Well, Barney, I made a mistake, didn't I? We all make mistakes, General. What are you doing to Burton? Are you trying to destroy that man? Yes, I am. Why? For God's sakes, why? Because he's a liar, a cheat, and a coward. Because he's covered himself with dirt and it rubs off everywhere. He does his job. He's required to contribute to the war effort by running a base hospital smoothly and efficiently. He does that. Anyway, Burton can take care of himself. It's you I'm thinking about, Barney. Are you trying to throw your career out the window? No, sir. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to prove? I'm trying to prove that the system works, General. You asked me to put on a demonstration, I'm doing that. No man is above the law, we know that, but no man is below it either. And that's what I'm proving. Well, Barney, you'd better go ahead and prove it. For myself, I don't deal in individuals. That's a luxury I can't afford. I'm here to fight a war. I still say that you don't buy a victory by rigging a murder trial. 
I don't know whether you do or not, but that's your pigeon now. I'm already on the next crisis. You know, Bonnie, I was hoping to tell you soon that you'd been made full colonel. Does that sound like bribery? Well, it wasn't meant to be. Give my regards to your old man when you write to him. I'll do that. Well, if you will, bold googlies and long hops, inevitable, I suppose. 207 for... Oh, never mind. Good morning. Have you just got up, or did you manage to stagger into court? We got there. Beer, I think. Got you two beers, please. Well, have you rung down the curtain on the high drama of the courtroom? We precessed. And what's the brilliant defense? Self-preservation, provocation, or didn't he know the gun was loaded? If you must know, the brilliant defense is insanity. Now, if you'll excuse us. What do English officers always use our bar? We never use theirs. I tried, Ducky. The beer's too warm. Tell me, are you putting Kaufman in the box? Kaufman's dead. Cracked up his car racing to get here. Good God, I'm sorry. So you'll appreciate we're having a difficult time enough without a running commentary from you, sir. Brilliant, Doctor. Well, I hear you're making a complete nonsense of it. I'd like a large, cold glass of water. Yes, sir. Again, President Court. I would remind the witness that he's still under oath. Colonel Adams. I have no more questions for this witness, sir. Major Smith. No question, sir. Now the witness may stand down. If the defense rests, has the prosecution any further? The defense does not rest, sir. I have one more witness to call. Very well. You swear that the evidence you shall give in the case now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. State your full name, rank, organization, and station. John Gerald Kensington, Major, Royal Army Medical Corps, and the Area Medical Officer, Bakke District. Be seated. Major Kensington. What are your medical qualifications, please, sir? I'm a doctor of medicine, London University. I have a diploma in psychological medicine. I'm a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians, and I was lecturer at Guy's Hospital in psychopathology. Late Whiteley Fellow in psychological medicine at London University. I'm the author of a chapter on psychosomatic illnesses in Taylor's medical jurisprudence. Thank you, sir. 
This is a report written by a medical practitioner after an examination of Lieutenant Winston. Would you read this, please? I object. The defense has introduced an unsigned, uncertified document. There's no proof at all that this is a report on Lieutenant Winston's condition. The report is typed on hospital stationery. It is headed Lieutenant Charles Winston. It bears his serial number. It is titled History and Prognosis. Now, what more does the trial judge advocate want? Colonel Adams, the law officer has already ruled that this is an anonymous and unspecified document. I would suggest that defense counsel is pursuing an unorthodox course, to say the least. If it will help the court, I will concede that this is an anonymous report written about an anonymous patient, even if the court so wishes a non-existent patient. That is in order. The objection is overruled. Thank you, sir. Major Kensington, you read the report? Yes. Is there anything in this report, Major, that is not consistent with your diagnosis of Lieutenant Winston? It is almost word for word what I would have written myself. <laughs> Lieutenant Winston was the only commissioned officer at Buckley. He had the power and the authority. But Sergeant Quinn broke down this authority. He undermined Lieutenant Winston. He laughed at him and mocked him, and the process of disintegration began. He had an unhappy, lonely childhood. He married a woman who terrified him. His three sons apparently treated him with contempt and pity, and the only reason he joined the army was in a pathetic attempt to impress them. After Pearl Harbor, he began to create a fantasy of winning the war single-handed. That was when he began to degenerate from a mere neurotic into a paranoic. The murder of Sergeant Quinn was the last desperate effort of Lieutenant Winston to defend himself with the exercise of power. But already at this point, he was insane. He was insane then, and he's insane now. I'm sane! I'm the only one here who is sane! I'm sane, you lousy, limey quack. Well, tell him I'm sane. Come on, you big hero lawyer. Whose side are you on? And I don't care for the lot of you. You think you're sane? I'm with a bitch. I know a lot of you, Corporal. Tell him who your sister married. A Filipino, yeah. Stand up and tell him. Tell him. And you, yeah, you'll get yours. You'll get yours. I'm going to report on how you operate their center. I'm going to do it myself. To the Congress of the United States of America, I'm going to tell them, I watched them go up that hill. I watched them, and I kissed it off my foot. I had it. I had it, my black foot. <laughs> old day taking it all around. Under the circumstances, I think I'd be wiser to hot foot it up to the hills, don't you? Taking it all around? Thanks. It's all the same to me. I can dream about Harley Street up in Bacree just as well as I can down here. It's rather different for you, isn't it? You're not just a wartime officer. win or lose. It's my life. Good luck. I'll be right with you, Baxter.
I'm going to miss the jasmine. Say goodbye to me. Was worth it, wasn't it? Yes, Jade, it really was. Just because you can't lick him, that doesn't mean you have to join him. <laughs> They'll make out all right. <laughs> 